not exalting flesh. We're just saying thank God for God's ministry. And thank God we live in a nation we can still do that. Let's thank God for the ministry gift that he's placed in. Brother Milton Green, as he comes. Praise Brother. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Praise <laughs> God. More love you, brother. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. God. I preached, spoken long ago. Through the prophets to the people in many portions in many ways in these last days have spoken us through his son. Whom he's appointed heir of all things and through whom he's made the world. He's a radiance of his glory, the exact representation of his nature, upholds all things by the word of his power and when he's made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And because of the great love he's loved us, he's raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus in order that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is exact image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And in and through Jesus Christ, all things are created in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether throne, dominions, rules, or authority. Everything is created through Jesus Christ and for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is before all things, and in Jesus Christ, all things hold together. Jesus Christ is also the head of the church, for he is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, that he should come to have first place in everything and all the fullness should dwell in him. And God has reconciled all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of the cross. And although you were formerly alienated, walking in the flesh, you were hostile to God, he's reconciled you in his fleshly body through death that you, he should present you before him holy and blameless before him in love. Glory be to God forevermore. So, <laughs> praise God. So in Jesus Christ, the fullness of the God head dwells bodily. In Jesus Christ, we're made complete. All our sins are blotted out and nailed across. And in Jesus Christ, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. God, glory be to God forevermore. Well, I think you're going to make it tonight. I don't think a ship's going to sink for you. This is good news, isn't it? How to overcome walking love. And uh, we st uh, someone was leading the praise here a while back last week, and he was talking about David was, uh, the dance that David did was spinning fits. So I, I hope we get in a few of them before this week's over, okay? <laughs> Let's just pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we just want to exalt you. We just come to boast in you. We just bow our hearts before you. I think of there's none to compare to you. I thank you for your word. It's forever settled in heaven. We receive your word, which performed its work in you, in us. And Lord, we just humble ourselves before you. We choose, Lord, with our will and our whole heart to love you with all our heart and to love our neighbors ourselves, to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, to walk in a manner worthy of you, to please you and to bear fruit for you and increase in the knowledge of your word in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just thank you that uh, for the, uh, the quickening of the word, the enlightening of the word, and the word does conform us to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, we, and Lord, we just want to just bless you and thank you for your presence. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that you disarmed the rulers and authorities. You made a public display of them, having triumphed over them. And Lord Jesus, we just address ourselves to all these works of darkness. We stand in the word. We possess the land in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We rule and reign in Jesus' name. We let the high praises of God be in our mouth, a two-edged sword in our hand. We execute vengeance upon the heathen, punishment on the people. We bind their kings with chains, their nobles with fetters of iron. We execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have every saint in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I take authority over all religious spirits and every religious stronghold in here. You're sealed with the blood and you're bound right now in the name of Jesus. No stronghold can minister or hinder. We bless our enemies. We bind up every word, curse, and spell over this meeting, over me, over the ministry of the word, and every hindrance to, to the work of the Holy Spirit in hearts here. All of a word, curse, and spell is removed right now in the name of Jesus. 
all tiredness, fatigue, heaviness, destruction, confusion, mind wandering, mind binding, the spirit of error, the spirit of hardity, doubt, unbelief, skepticism, and all the works of the flesh and the thoughts of the flesh. We hold the word in the blood and it's removed and you'll not be any hindrance here in the name of Jesus. We're in liberty and freedom here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We rule and reign in Jesus' name. Right now, I bind up all oppression, compromise, complacency, confusion, mind-binding, every mind-binding spirit, all the works of darkness removed. And in the name of Jesus, I speak blessings, peace, grace, love, healing, and deliverance over this meeting and over every person here in Jesus' name. Glory be to God for everyone. Hug three people around the neck before you sit down, okay? Let me hug your neck, brother. Glory. <laughs> Good spirit in here tonight, brother. Amen. And about the same crowd that was here last night. Mm -hmm. Isn't that wonderful? I praise the worship that you feel in time wise. Pardon me? That doesn't take too much. Oh no, everything fine, brother. It's okay. just perfect, everything. I'm not gonna say nothing about nothing, brother. I just love everything. <laughs> praise God. Turn to Malachi. Do y'all hear some good stories tonight? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know what? I think one of the most encouraging things for, make it Malachi 3, for someone who teaches the Word of God is to see people. See, when God puts something in your heart, when, in other words, when God gives you your heart, uh, gives you a part, he puts something in your heart to go with the part. And what, I tell you what, just, I'm telling you what it just about, uh, does me in. I'm telling you is to see people excited the word and see them excited about Jesus. I'm going to tell you what, if people are not excited about the word and receiving the word, they're not be, I'm telling you, they have a problem with the powers of darkness. They have a tremendous problem. Right. Praise God. Now, we're going to be talking and having some understanding about the fiery trials that we go through. Of course, I mean, we're, what we're interested in overcoming we're interested in a walk of peace. We're interested in pleasing God and walking in a matter worthy of Him and please Him, right? Now, I have a lot of scripture that I want to use here, and we're going to tie some things together, and I believe it's going to walk. I think it's, it might change your life here tonight, give you understanding, and when, when you have understanding about these things, you can walk through the rivers and walk through the fire, right? Amen. Standing on the Word. Verse 1, Malachi 3, verse 1, Behold, I'm going to send my messenger before me. That's John the Baptist. This is Jesus speaking. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple and the messenger of the covenant. That's the Lord Jesus Christ in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Who can endure the day of his coming? And he who can stand when he appears for he's like a refiner's fire. And he's like fuller soap. Now, let me share something with you. The only way that you can make it through this world without being destroyed by the powers of darkness who are the fire is to have the protection and a hedge of God. Everyone in this world is destroyed and removed from this world by the powers of darkness if they don't, uh, if they're not walking in covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we explained last night, when you, uh, when, you, when you do any act against God or against your neighbor, the hedge comes down and the powers of darkness can move until you get that sin covered by the blood. Get repented because it breaks God's law. Now, if you don't repent, the powers of darkness can put more chains, more chains, and they build fortresses. One of the fortresses is the root. What is the root? That's, the root is the motives of our heart. Now, all our motives are supposed to be as unto the Lord. We're trying to please the Lord in every thought we have and every deed that we have. But see, if we have a root of greed to move in, then our, their motives change. We're trying to fulfill greed in our lives. We love greed. If we uh, see in that root of greed builds into a fortress, and sicknesses and diseases come off of these fortresses and begin destroying your body. The same thing about pride. Pride is uh, another root. If your motives become 
uh, pride or greed, see, it's a, that's a character in nature of Satan. That's rebellion to God. And see, when you're walking in this, you don't have any protection from God. If you practice it and won't overcome it. See, we're all overcoming some things. You better be overcoming. Another one be the approval of man. For instance, if approval of man, if many, many of you have ever had depression, and many of you even considered suicide. Suicide follows depression. But it all started because you wanted the approval of man, then you got into rejection. See, if your motive had been Jesus instead of wanting the approval of man, you'd never suffer rejection because your relationship with everyone is as unto the Lord. But then when you were hurt or, or disappointed in, by some person, then you became rejected. Then you became angry. This is the steps that the powers of darkness began. Put, put that up there, brother. This is the steps that the powers of darkness begin building. The first thing, here is your root of... Uh, it's coming up there. It'll be up there in just a minute. It's good. About to, it likes about two inches, and it's going to be up there. About three inches. It's coming up now. It's going... There it is. See, it's a root. Approval of man. Now, there's a war going on. But oh, my old buddy's in it now, now, aren't you, brother? <laughs> It's gone. <laughs> okay. There's the approval of man. You, the root and motive of your heart is supposed to be the Lord Jesus Christ, right? All right, this is, when you, see, this is the way, this is the ministry of the devil to get you to seek the approval of man. So when you seek the approval of man, the powers of darkness can work rejection and they start building the fortress. This is what brings torment. This is what destroys all your peace. And these are the things the powers of darkness build in your life to destroy you. Now, I want you to know that you can sit inside of a church building and be destroyed. That's how Babylon, the church, the Babylon whore harlot church, it speaks blessings and curses in the last days as a dwelling place of demons, which we'll see and understand. All right, now you drop it down a little bit, brother. So we're seeking this approval. Then you get the next thing, you'll be rejected. Now, how many of you had depression? Hold up your hand. All right, now, see, I'm going to show you. This is where it all started. The next thing that happened to you, uh, this disappointment, you became angry toward that person. Think back. You got hate in your heart. You had even murder in your heart. Murder, hate, and anger is the same. When you want to separate yourself from somebody, then you got into unforgiveness. See, this is a fruit. This fruit began coming. See, here's the root, the approval of man, and then this fruit began coming out your mouth. Can you hear somebody in criticism? Can you hear somebody in unforgiveness? Can you hear anger? Can you hear rejection? Are you hearing me? See, this is discernment that we're supposed to have to set people free. We get them set free, get them repent of that, and then let the strongholds get them off of them. Jesus' name. All right, then it got into unforgiveness and resentment and then criticism, speaking curses on the person. Bitterness. Diseases come off of bitterness. And then after the uh, bitterness, you got into self-pity. Every one of you, you held up your hands right then. You got into self-pity, and you began feeling sorry for yourself. And then the more bitterness and the self-pity you got in, that was to the degree that uh, the uh, depression was on you. The world out there gives people medication for that, and, t and psychologists and psychiatrists of the world teach you, when you go to them, they teach you how to live with it how to live with strongholds, how to live with the powers of darkness, how to cope with it, because they don't understand it's a spiritual problem you've got. So people in that, that, that depression gets so bad on a person and more bitter and unforgiveness uh, and self-pity he gets into, the more the powers of darkness can put this depression on him. And then he comes to the place where he dreads even going, he dreads night and he dreads more. It's like the curse in Deuteronomy 28. And then they'll eventually show him, a, a, a talk him suicide to talk him into that. There's nothing else to live for. And then he'll use an overdose, uh, jump off a bridge or whatever like that and destroy it. That's how it happens. All right, now what do you think the world and the church will tell you how to do? They'll tell you the same thing in the world. They teach you how to cope with these things. They give you... Uh, a little counseling and tell you how to cope and live with it. You, you, what you need to do is repent. And in two minutes, you can be free from it. If you come to the Lord with all your heart and flesh, you don't have to get a running start or nothing. All of it will just leave and see. <laughs> and so, 
This is the fire. This is the fire. The powers of darkness are the one who wants to pull these roots in you and get the, and see the same thing agreed. The same, the only root that's supposed to be in your life is the Lord Jesus Christ. Every motive is unto the Lord. That's how you love the Lord with all your life. If heart, if you don't love the Lord with all your heart, you've got some problems. You want to turn it off there, Walter? Thank you. Okay, now, we're in Malachi. We're going to see this fire that we go through. And this is the kind of things that powers of darkness want to get us to do. Get, you know what we're supposed to do? You understand now, look back up here at me. You know we're supposed to love our neighbors ourselves to fulfill the law. Is that right? All right, if we're going to love our neighbors ourselves, that means we have to be perfected in love. You don't just say, I'm going to go love my neighbors ourselves and then go love myself. No, you have to be perfected in love. How are you perfected in love? By the Word of God and the Spirit of God. And then what does that mean? Jesus Christ is formed in you. You will have a divine nature, which we're going to see here tonight, how love is perfected in you, how you overcome, how you walk in peace, how, and how you're destroyed in the fire too. In the last days, there's going to be a great falling away of the church. You're sitting in the middle of it. We're in Matthew 25 where everybody has been asleep, the wise and the foolish too. We've been waking up. We've been waking up. And the wise are going to come to the Word of God. The foolish love the approval of men. They like to look at smart folks. They bow to academics. They bow to uh, intellect. They bow to any other, all other things, but they never come to the Lord their whole heart because they got some nice group like the Pharisee that love the approval of men rather than the approval of God. That's what get, got this stronghold into the fellow right there, the approval of men. So the Lord lets the powers of darkness, everyone in the world is being destroyed with every sin that they, every word they speak against their neighbor. I want to tell you, when you're in a kind of, you can have peace in your place in the moment the conversation speaks and, and it's not love toward your neighbor, the, the presence of God moves out and the presence of the powers of darkness can move in. They have a right to. God's left until you repent and get that. Repent of these things and then the Spirit of God will move back. And that's how you have peace and that's how you keep peace. And when people of the world are speaking these curses and words against their brother, they get, they judge or judge. When they condemn, they're condemned. When they, have, when they won't pardon, they're pardoned. And chain on top of chain and stronghold on stronghold and they build these fortresses in them until they're destroyed. The Christian, when he loses this peace, he knows he's done something wrong. He doesn't blame God. God, I self-pity, why would you ever do this to me? And that sort of thing. He just gets more of the powers of darkness on him. When that, no, he says, I'm wrong. I've done something wrong. And I don't have peace right now. So you get before God. You say, Lord, I love you more than I do. Anything else, show me what it is. And the Lord will show it to him. Then he repents from it. It's placed under the blood. And then he, the Lord forgives him. And then he's no longer a lawbreaker. And the powers of darkness have to butt out. They have to back up right. The hedge returns and he's back in peace. But the person who has a form of godliness, listen to me. The people who walk in a form of godliness... Do not walk with repentant hearts. And so the powers of darkness continue to build chain on chain and chain. As I told you before, the powers of darkness, how you die to the flesh, is the powers of, the, the Lord will let the powers of darkness bring pressure. If you're in rejection, they'll set you up to be rejected and rejected and rejected and rejected until you die to it. Amen? You'll quit seeking, seeking the approval of man. You'll start pre seeking the approval of God and rejection's all over. Amen? When you're seeking the approval of God, you're not going to be angry. You're not going to have hate. You're not going to have murder. You're not going to have unforgiveness. You're not going to have criticism because you want well, God's approval more than you do want that selfish, self-nature. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And it's during these pressures that the powers of darkness, they do it through people. And if you've got a little bit of reputation, a little bit of pride, they'll come and persecute you for the word's sake and get you to back off the word. If you have that much reputation you want to protect, or you want that much approval of man, you'll back off the word because you love these things more than you do the Lord. And they can put chain, chain, chain. Now, I'm going to tell you, God demands that you love the Lord with all your heart, and then the word of God and the spirit of God will perfect the divine nature in you. You love your neighbors yourself. Now, that is a nightmare that we've waken up from because we've been to many degrees walking in a form of godliness, and that form of godliness has been getting us destroyed right in the midst of the congregation. Now, there's some... Some of us have learned some more and know some more than others, but we need to keep going on. There's a lot of things more. I'm going to tell you, until you, Jesus Christ is formed in you, right? Is that right? 
Amen. Now we're in Malachi 3. All right, now this is the way Jesus does it. He's got, he's, has a, for he's like a refiner's fire, verse 2, and a fuller's soap, at verse 3, and he will sit as a smelter and a purifier of silver. Sound like you're going to be saved as through fire, doesn't it? And he'll purify the sons of Levi. That's us. And he'll refine them like gold and silver. May I ask you what that gold is? Folks, It listen to me. Now look at me. It's when this pressure is on you that you stand there and then you don't look too good. And somebody has come against you. They reviled you. And instead of reviling back, you stand right there and you, and once I said it last night, I won't say it again. You can explain, boy, I'll tell you what, you can really fix this wagon right there. You can really get him straight, but you don't do it. You stand right there because you're wanting to look good to God more than you want the proofs. I mean my to the world, the reputation, the flesh, and get the approval of people. And so you die. You die to that pride. You die to that reputation. You die to yourself. And that's the way you do it. You die because when the pressures come, you stand in the Word of God. And I'm going to tell you, after you stand there, stood there a while, you're going to see in the Word that the Lord is going to confirm you. He's going to strengthen you. That's how you're perfected in love. And then he establishes you in this covenant right here. But he's going to have all your heart first because he's chosen you to bear fruit of love. This, this fruit will remain. You're not going to go backwards. You go forwards. You're going to endure the end. You're going to overcome. And then whatever you ask in the Father's name, he's going to give it to you. And that's how the prayer of a church that he's building into us right now, I tell you what, we don't have to wait for the man to come to town anymore. Our prayers get answered when we're bearing and being perfected in love. Amen? The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Praise God. So, let's look in verse 5. He says, then I'm going to draw near to you. Oh, now I didn't finish that verse 3. And he will sit as a smeller and purify a silver and he'll purify the sons of Levi. He's going to refine them like gold and silver. Brother, when you go through the fire, if, you're, if your foundation is wood, hay, and stubble, if you're standing on a foundation of sand, can I tell you what a foundation of sand is a form of godliness? If you're a carnal doctrine that does not conform you to godliness, if you're standing there, then the powers of darkness will come with this form and they'll put chain on chain and that fire will burn you up because your foundation was sand. How many of you see that? Hold up your hand. But if you're standing on the Word, you're not just a hearer of the Word, you're a doer of the Word, and you stand right there in that Word when that pressure comes, and then when it comes right there, you just keep standing on God's Word, and you just let it just, you suffer in the flesh, but you cease from sin, and then there'll come a day when the pressure's come, and it won't move you that much. You know why? Because the glory and strength and everything Jesus is is upon you and they, you're stronger than anything the devil ever wants to bring. You are when you're in the fire, but you got that's the way you put to death the deeds of the flesh. You stand and you don't revile back. You don't insult for insult. You die right there in it. Amen? Now, let me tell you something. If you're not dying in it, listen to me. Somebody's not looking. <laughs> if you're not dying in it, then you're hitting back at your neighbor. You're hitting back. You're hitting back because you have to prove prep reputation. You have to prove pride. You got to look good. And every time you do, every time you do, the chains, chains, bondage, bondage, stronghold, stronghold, fortresses, fortresses. And the next thing, they're visiting you in a hospital. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. Now, I'm going to show you. You remember Hebrews 12, and I want to show you how these things work there. Now, I'm going to show you. Amen? Just tying that part right there. Now, verse 5. Now, we're going to, we, I'm going to finish 3. We're going to be finding them in gold and silver. So that, so that, so that. You're going to go through the fire so that you may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. Put up Jesus up there, the fruit of Jesus, Walter. The fruit of Jesus. Now put it where we can see the bottom there first, brother. Here we go. And this a little bit, four inches, three, two, move it up. Oh, and we got there. Okay. 
Now, this is a man right here, the root love Jesus. This is the inner man right here. This is your heart. That's a real you, not your pumper. That's a real you right here. Now, you have purified your heart right there. You have gone through the fire. You've died to anger, hate, murder, unforgiveness, resentment, and all these things have just died to them. You've died to them. You quit living. Your mind's not on I, me, my. Your mind is as unto the Lord. You die to them and die to them and die to them, and they leave you. They leave you. They leave you. When you prove, prove you love the Lord more than anything else, you're suffering that pretty soon. He'll just come down on you. And it's gone. And then he'll bring something else. So he'll get rid of the other. You'll be reading the word. He said, that's got to go. And then it, he'll bring that thing in on you right there and you die to it. And then he, and then you prove you love him more than you do to anger. You prove you loved him more than you unforgiveness. You prove him you more love pride than pride. And boy, and when you get through, I'm going to tell you what that thing will leave you and a comforter will get all over you. That's when he comforts. Amen? Glory be to God forevermore. That's good. And then when you go through the fire, all these temptations, you stop these temptations, you put up a shield of faith, you don't let it get down in your heart so you're going to speak it out of your mouth. You stop anger, unforgiveness, resentment, criticism, every, all of these things are against your neighbor. You stop them right up here. You take every thought captive to be just a Jesus. You don't let it get in your heart because you're purifying. You're possessing the land. There's a stronghold behind anger. There's a stronghold besides hate. There's a stronghold behind pride. There's a stronghold behind unforgiveness. These are the Canaanite nations that's on the land. You're going to possess the land from them. Amen? You've got the sword. You've got your weapons in Ephesians 6, and you're going to get them off of land in Jesus' name. And then after you've gone through the fire, you possess the land. You have a pure heart. You conform to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we got a new fruit. The fruit's what comes out of your mouth. The fruit is the evidence of the loving your neighbors yourself is coming out of your heart. And this is how you present to the Lord fruit of righteousness. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance, and faith. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Now let's read that again. That you're going to put you through the fire. Is everybody seeing this? Amen? All right, now verse 5. I mean, for 3. I'm going to sit as a smeller and purify as silver. He's going to purify the sons of Levi. He's going to refine them like gold and silver so that, so that, so that you go through the fire so you can die to the flesh, so that, circle, so that about three times. So that you may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. That is the offerings in righteousness to love the Lord with all your heart and your neighbors yourself. That's the only righteousness they are that God receives. He's not a Lutheran righteousness. He's not a Catholic righteousness. He's not a Baptist righteousness. Methodist righteousness. There are over 400 denominations and teachings in this country. The Pharisees established their own righteousness. They had a zeal for God, but they were ignorant to the righteousness of God. So they established... their own righteousness. They say, you do this, 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 and you go to heaven. Today, folks say, you do this, 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 this. Come and join up and let this have your heart and you can go to heaven. This one said, you do this, 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 this is a way to heaven. This, 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 this is a way to heaven. This, 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 this is a way to heaven. Let's do that over 400 times, and then let me tell you. Somebody's wrong. <laughs> and you know what you do? When you've done this, 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 then you become offended by the part of the Bible that doesn't fit into this, 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 this. You become offended. <laughs> and Jesus becomes a rock of offense and a stumbling stone, just as he did the Pharisees. He tried to lead them out of spiritual darkness, but the words he spoke wouldn't fit into this, 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 and this. That's where the powers of darkness lead people, to get this, 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 and this. And then they can't be led into all truth. And then there's not the unity of the church. There's not the unity of the faith. They're not perfected in love. They're not in one heart and one mind as a church of Acts. Was there a pattern? 
but to compare theirself among herself, measure herself by theirself, and do without understanding. Now, let me tell you what this is. When you let this, 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 this capture your heart, and you make your commitment to this, 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 this in your heart, you establish your own righteousness, and you do not submit to the righteousness that comes to God. You know what this is called? Legalism. As man's rules to be perfect in love. In Galatians, he talks to some people, have you start you foolish Galatians? Have you started in the spirit and now you're going to be perfected in the flesh? Are you going to, in other words, are you going are you going to be perfected? Walking in the flesh? You you got a doctrine that's contrary and it's distorted, and now you're going to be perfected walking in the flesh? See, look at me. Lovely. If I do this, 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 go to heaven. Put up the flesh, please. That's a lot easier for me to do this, 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 this than it is to endure a sound doctrine and be led by the Spirit of God to put to death all these things and die. Right. Now, are you seeing what a doctrine of demons is? Doctrine of the demons teach people it's all right to practice them as they practice them, they're destroyed. And James 4 says, James 3 and 4 says, speak blessings and curses against your neighbor. Say, you know, you can't, you're going to have two natures instead of one nature? How can you have a divine nature if you've got the nature of the devil? Tell me. This wisdom, that when you come from above, it's world, flesh, and demonic. Said, when you pray, you pray amiss. Because you want to cast it on your own lust. In other words, you want you pray and you want me to come down and cooperate with you while your heart's still seeking greed and pride in the nature and character of Satan. You're not led by the Spirit of God. You've already built in your tower into heaven. This, 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 and this. You got smarter than God. By the way, one of the, is the Church of Jesus Christ is supposed to be. Is there only one Jesus? Is there only one that go on gospel? There's only one church. That Bible in your lap only talks about one, and they love one another. You know why? They're led by the Spirit of God to put this to death so they can be perfected in love. But if you've got a form of godliness, you're destroyed in it. That's what I want to show you in your Bible this week. And can I tell you something? It's good news. Because we've been being, we've been living a whole bunch of stuff, folks, that God didn't intend for us to live with. Now, what I want you to do is put what I just told you on the shelf. I don't receive nothing from any man until I see it in the Word or have it confirmed me to God. And now I want to go through the Word of God, and I want to show it to you these next two nights, and I'm going to tell you what. It's going to set you free. Amen? Amen? Now, we're going to get to Malachi 3, 5 now. Then I'm going to draw near to you for judgment. I'm going to be a swift witness against the sorcerers. That's what he called Babylon, the, the harlot. Against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the wage earner in the wages, the widow and offering, offering, and those who turn aside the alien, and they do not fear me. Let me ask you something. If all you had to do is just do this, 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 you'd never know about this judgment we've been talking about in the fire, would you? Then if you don't know about these things, you're blind to the fear of God, aren't you? The fear of God is good. It's good. It's a lot better than fearing the devil and men. Amen? He's something to fear. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Let me you get this straight. Now, this is going to be hard on some folks, but I want you to say it. God is in no war right now 
with the powers of darkness except to help you when you walk with him. He can remove them. Not one demon does one thing, including Satan, without the permission of God. See, now that, that's the thing. That set you free. Not one. See, God is the one in charge, folks. We don't have to go help God out with the devil. <laughs> when you get in on what God's up to, you don't go around with your mind on what the devil's doing. We have our mind on what Jesus is saying. I don't go around my mind on what the devil is, but when you got your mind on Jesus, you'll know something comes in. It's not, not God. <laughs> Amen? And then when you're walking in this love and everything, you we see we'll be able to discern this fruit in one another. We'll see and we help one another in love. We don't condemn one another. We all need help. I need help. I need help. I'm telling you, this pastor here has helped me. I just, you, you can't know how much that God's used him to minister to me. Buddy, I, I'm, I needed some help. And I still need help. I need help in the body of Christ. But I'll tell you something. Not one demon. By the way, God created them and he didn't make them too complicated. He couldn't control them. All right? <laughs> you either. <laughs> and so the powers of darkness want to build some big thing in our mind yeah. about them. About them. Big deal. The big deal, and there's only one big deal, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. That's good, brother. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. Don't make it. Now, let me get down close to you tell you this. <laughs> Don't make this some deep, dark, complicated thing about following Jesus. When you do, you've missed him. You're listening to the devil or traditions or something like that. Let me say that over here. Don't make following the Lord Jesus Christ something complicate, complicated. When you decide to love the Lord with all your heart, do that first, or the rest of it's not going to work. And then you choose with your heart and your will to love me as yourself. I want you to know that the Spirit of God and the Word of God, and He'll lead you and He'll show you and you won't have any problem because he's going to, he, he'll make you something you ain't. All right? I don't make, don't make these things complicated. It's something we get in on. Faithful as he had called you and he'll bring it to pass, but he can't bring it to pass in a bunch of devils. You've got to love him with all your heart and you've got to choose to love. And the whole Bible right here is to show you, I'm sorry, the whole Bible Here's to show you how it's perfect the divine nature of God in you. You, you. you turn away from the nature of Satan. The nature of Satan. You know with this stuff in your mind right up here, jealousy, pride, anger, worry, all these things, you've got the mind of Satan. Right. And your mind is set on the flesh. If your mind's set on the flesh, it's what? Death, because all these things break God's law, and the law brings death, and there's no hedge of protection from God. Is that correct? You follow me? Well, don't make these things too complicated because I'm going to tell you they're going to fit in and it's going to be the Word that ministers and show it to you. God's got the power. God's in control. We come to God with all our heart. And the Spirit of God, this Bible, is to perfect you in the divine nature of God. A pure heart. When this is removed from your heart right here and you possess the land, ever, I'm telling you, God, ever since Abraham, he's had some, a land for him to possess. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Can I tell you something? If you practice this anger, you've got a stronghold of anger on you. That's part of the Canaanite nations that's got to come off the land. If you practice hatred and criticism, you've got a stronghold of hatred and criticism. Every fruit there is of Satan that you practice, you've got a stronghold behind it. Now, don't come up with any cute sayings right there and everything and act like you've got peace, although you walk in the stubbornness of your heart. You'll repent from it. And see, are you beginning to see the fear of God? When you fear God, angels encamp around those who fear Him. See, what, you know what really the fear of God means? The fear of God means that you simply understand the reality of the love and judgment of God. 
And you don't, if you get a picture of God ready to just zap you out when you stumble and fall, you've got the wrong image. Because I'm going to tell you what, you will make mistakes. But you know when you fall down, as Jeremiah says, 8, you'll get back up again. You know why? Because you love the Lord with all your heart. You'll keep coming to the light. 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 Hallelujah. And right now we're working through a time of unlearning some things. And, and we could really get into a good case of condemning one another and judging one another, that spiritual pride and all this kind of thing. And it's a time to let our light shine and love one another and practice these things so God, walk in these things so God can get these things off of us. Amen? Now, well, boy, I was hoping to be Malachi, through Malachi about a half an hour ago. Now, verse 15. So this is what a form of godliness does. So now we call the arrogant, they're blessed. Not only are the doers of wickedness flesh built up, but they all test, also test God and escape. You know, I'm just looking at that today. You test God. You know, I want to tell you how you test God. That you can just shake your fist in God's head, uh, God's face. And you can just turn and turn back to the devil. You can test him, and escape means that you just fall away. I know that messed up a lot of theology, but uh, you can turn away from God. You know what turns you away from God? When you won't continue. What is it you have to continue to do? You continue to be possess a land. What makes you turn back? It's when the powers of darkness get your heart loving something more than Jesus. That's when you turn back. Don't make something big and complicated about possessing the land. It's just a natural to hate these things right here when Jesus has, a, has all your heart is in. And you'll hate the fear of God is to hate evil. When you understand the fear of God, see, to understand the reality of things, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The fear of God's beginning of knowledge. All right, if you know the fear of God, you know the reality of the judgment and the fire and destruction for those who are not led by the Spirit of God to possess the land, right? All right, those who walk in the form of godliness don't have the knowledge of that. And they don't have the fear of God. So they're destroyed for, that, for lack of knowledge. That's how Babylon becomes a dwelling place of demons. They glorify themselves. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is selfish ambition when you glorify yourself. We, we, we glorify Jesus. Amen? Now listen, I've said a lot of things. Maybe a few of these things hadn't tied together. Put them right. Everything I say, put it on the shelf until you see it in the Word. Amen? That's where we're headed. You're going to see it. Glory be to God. Isn't that good to see it in the Word? Amen? Okay. Verse 16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. Glory be to God. Isn't that something? And the Lord gave attention and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord, who esteem his name, and they'll be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I prepare my own possession. That's his special treasure. And I'll spare them. I'm going to put a hedge around them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Now let's go there to Malachi 4. I, don't, I like 18 there first. So you'll again, you're going to distinguish between the righteous and you're going to distinguish between the wicked. You're going to distinguish between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. And there's a lot of, there not been a whole lot of that distinguishing going on because you know why? We haven't been doing what the Bible said. You're going to know them by their what? Right? You know a person's heart by what comes out of his mouth. Amen? Well, you, well, you, listen. Who's going to be dealing with fruit when you have to do this, 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 and this, and you go on to heaven? Who's going to worry about fruit? Who's going to worry about flesh? Who's going to worry about demons? Who's going to worry about who the harlot is? Who's going to worry about doctrine of demons? Who's going to worry about holiness? Who's going to worry about righteousness? Who's going to worry about discernment? Who's going to look on and on? Are you hearing? Throw it away. Throw that, cast the word behind you because you've got this, 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 this. Now you're seeing what I'm saying. Now, chapter 4, verse 1. Behold, the day is coming. Now, I want you to remember this. It's going to be burning like a furnace. And all, all, all the arrogant. And all, all, and every, every, every evildoer. 
every evildoer, circle every evildoer. You're going to learn something about the fear of God. We'll be shout. And the day, that's the day of the Lord that is coming, is going to set them ablaze. Can I tell you that's happening right now? Says the Lord of hosts, so it's going to leave them neither root. They're going to fall. The evildoers are not going to have any root in Jesus, nor branch. And that's exactly what Matthew 7 and John uh, 15 tells you, that the branch is thrown into the fire. When they wither, they won't receive the word to be perfected in love, and, and uh, they're burned up. They're thrown in the fire. They have no, when you have no protection of God, the powers of darkness come and they're tree cutters. They cut the tree down. They are the tree cutters. They come and cut the tree down. How many know the powers of darkness are the tree cutters? Hold up your hands. Okay. They're tree cutters. They come and cut the tree down. Now, now let me tell you something, folks. Is the foolish virgins going to come to the wise in the last days? They say their lamp's going out. I want to show you, if I can get to this night, I want to show you how when their lamp is going out, they're being destroyed, the hell has come upon them. And if once they scoffed and laughed at over here, they're going to come over and bow down at their feet. And they're going to want the oil because their lamps are going out because they're being destroyed. A wise virgin is someone that hears the word of God and acts on. The foolish virgin has this foundation of sand. He doesn't have to be a doer of the word because he's got a false security. And right now the day the trumpet's blowing, the foolish virgin hears the word of God and they don't act on it. They have a foundation of sand. The wise virgin, the Lord has his heart. He'll hear the trumpet blowing. And he'll come. There's a lamp shining in Jerusalem, and he'll come to the light. He's not going to come to any words. He's not going to come to my words or no other man's words. You'll, you'll hear the voice of Jesus. A stranger's voice, the body of Christ will not follow. They only hear the voice of Jesus. They only listen. They only, any man, they're listening to the voice of Jesus. They're listening to the voice of Jesus. That's only because they know his voice. That's the only thing they, uh, that's the only thing they look up to, and it's the only thing they hear the voice of Jesus, and they hear his voice. And the wise virgins, foolish virgins, only want to hear peace and safety. The wise virgins are going to come to the light. They're going to hear the and they're going to come to light and they, they're the bride that's going to get themselves ready. They're going to be holy and blameless because that's a bride that Jesus Christ is coming after. All else. And they're going to be saved as through fire. The rest are going to be destroyed in the fire. Now that's what we want to show you these four nights. And I want to tell you something, folks. When you're walking in it, you're overcoming, and you're coming through the fire, and you're being perfected love, I want you to know you have a lot of say-so and a lot of prayer power of God. You hear what I'm saying? But he can't bless you. When your motive's wrong, you pray amiss. He's not going to cooperate with criticism and greed, revenge, and stubbornness and selfishness. He's not going to cooperate with it. He'll cooperate with you when all your, when all your, it's, it's to give yourself and lay down your life. You have to lay down your life. You lay down all selfishness and self-love. It's a bunch of junk. It gets you killed. The way this world, look, look at them. Do you ever know what drives a man to want that last quarter when he's got more than he could spend in 14 lifetimes? It's just a compulsion. It's a stronghold that he can just see people walk around him, hurting all around him, and have nothing in his heart. He don't want to go around them. He's going to only be the ones around that can fulfill pride and greed and all the other selfish. He's a character and nature of Satan. It's a new day, folks. Now, we're going to distinguish between the one who serves God and the one that does not serve God. Glory be to God. Amen? All right now, and the day is coming, every evildoer is going to be shouted. And then we see in verse 2, But you who fear the name, 
the Son of Right. Now, you're the one that's going to go through the fire. Look, how many know the powers of darkness just sap you and steal your strength from you? Just weaken you. I mean, you're just dragging one foot out. Are you hearing me? Hear me? They put weakness and tiredness and diseases and things in your strength and death. That's the ones who are not coming through the fire. The ones who are suffering in the flesh and cease from sin, when the pressures come, they're dying in the flesh, they're the ones that are coming through the fire. You're standing on the Word of God and looking at my For you, they're the ones that fear His name. The Son of Righteousness is going to rise with healing in His wing, and you're going to go forth, and you're going to skip about like calves from a stall. Glory be to God. And just, you know, do you ever see a calf? He's so, I mean, he's so full of vim and vitality that he'll bounce, he'll stand there and just bounce right straight up. And, and do you ever see it? People just walk when they, and they bounce on their steps. And that's when we're getting this stuff all us. That way we, I mean, we'll just make four steps in one, you know. Skip like a calf because you're coming through the fire. Amen? Now see, you're coming through the fire and you have this strength because you're dealing with the strongholds and roots because you love the Lord more. See, you don't have to be complicated to figure all this out. The Spirit of God shows you these things. He'll make us look smart or something. <laughs> don't try to, you know, to fight. you don't have to be a Far Eastern expert to figure out the last days. The Spirit of God will just show it to you. I don't care if you've gone to the primer or whatever. I went to ninth grade. I'm a lot of encouragement, folks. <laughs> he showed me. I zero of the rim off of it. I was dying and it just, uh, they, they couldn't complete heart surgery on me and I was 43 years old in 1973. 43 years old. 13 years ago. And I was, uh, they attempted to do heart surgery and part of it they completed wasn't even working. I stayed on the heart and lung machine longer than anyone had ever stayed on that hospital. Heart surgery was new. They didn't even complete it. They put me in, they were surprised my heart even started back. They put me on coronary care and my heart stopped two different times. I went home a dying man, a lost man, and boy, and I hauled out for the mercy of God. I'd been keeping a stiff upper lip and hanging in there for three, and I'd been blocked from Jesus because I looked at religion. I watched when a little boy watched him try to take a preacher down in the basement and try to fight him and things like that. I knew these folks couldn't help herself. I knew they couldn't help me. And, and so I, these things had blocked me from ever getting to the real Jesus. And buddy, I called out, and I'm going to tell you what, I, they wasn't one thing that I, I mean, you talk about a zero, you talk about a nothing. I don't have nothing to boast in except the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he came in there and he, I'm going to tell you what his presence, I got up the next morning. I, my mind wasn't as much on dying as I wanted everybody in the world to have what happened to me. That's when you know you got it from God. Amen. Hallelujah. I couldn't, I couldn't even, I couldn't even carry on a conversation for over two years. Couldn't carry on. I mean, it'd been, it been kind of pitiful just to see me. The brain cell from uh, drugs, from alcohol. See, when you don't come to Jesus and you're demonized, which I, I couldn't get through the ninth grade in school because I was so demonized. At first, I saw I was a little quicker than some of the others. By the time I got to ninth grade in school, I couldn't even, I couldn't even concentrate. I would try. And so I didn't understand that. You ought to see the environment, you know, and living next door to a jail, I was cursing people when I was five years old, getting locked up in the bull pen, picking up cigarette butts when I was five years old and smoking. You ought to seen the town, seen the place. I went back there to that jail sometime back and I just visited there and I stood his bitch, tore it down there. And I thought back about all the, I had one of the most broken life, nut houses and everything else. What do, you, what do you do when you go to the world there? They put you in a, I went to a veterans hospital twice. I went my reputation. Isn't that good? And I stood right there where that jail was. I said, thank you, Jesus. I, want, devil, I said, Mr. Devil, I just want to testify to the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ here right now. Amen. <laughs> Now, the reason I wanted to share this with you, you can take a testimony and take the Word of God and preach yourself. You know that? It's easy to do. The devil shows you how. The only reason I did this is because I want to show you because, see, the man that sits up, stands up here, usually the big Jesus and all this kind of stuff, I want to just encourage you. If God can use me, he can use anybody. 
And this is the way he wants to do it because he wants all our hearts. But old Walter right there is in there. all his life. He's a pool hustler, and that's all he ever did, all he ever knew. And I, I never seen him by any more love of Jesus. Have you, Brother Bob? And he, his whole mind and heart just stays on how he can help and love people. His whole, he doesn't care about anything else. Nothing he has he cares about. The only thing he cares about is helping people, whosoever will. Huh. And see, he's so blessed. He, he, they just know where to tell it. They'll talk about it. See, it doesn't matter where you come from. That's what I'm going to tell you. I just want to tell you something about my reputation, some of my credentials and things like that. It don't matter. <laughs> The only thing that matters is Jesus. Amen? Praise God. Okay. Now, I want you to turn with me to Acts 3, and I want to read something with you, about to you. I'm going to read something to you out of 1 Corinthians 3, but I'm going to start with Acts 3. Now, 1 Corinthians 3 is for the fast turners. I'm not going to wait, everybody. I've got a long way to go here. 1 Corinthians 3. I want to read with you in verse 12. Now, if any man builds upon the foundation with gold and silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and straw, verse 13, each man's work is going to become evident. Boy, I want to tell you it's going to become evident. I'll see where you get burned up in the fire, brother. I'll tell you where you're evident or not. For the day, that's the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord's not going to come until apostasy comes first. You're sitting in apostasy. It's a day of apostasy now. The falling away is falling away from the faith where people start calling church something that's not church and calling something Christians that's not Christians. And they follow another Jesus beside this one in this Bible. For this day of the Lord is going to show it because it's going to be revealed with fire. And the fire itself is going to test the quality of each man's work. Verse 11. For no man can lay a foundation other than one which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. You better not get in the form of godliness. Now, I want to tell you something, folks, about these last days. The prophets of old. Now, listen. When, when Jesus, Paul... They spoke, it told about the coming of the Lord, the prophets of old talk about it, didn't they? Is that right? Shake your head, isn't that right? Jesus and the Paul, the disciples, used these scripture to show about the coming of the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you, he's coming again. Can I tell you the second verse to this, that the prophets of old is all, have also told us about this, this coming, he's coming now. But Colonel... Traditions has blocked us from being able to see it. I want to tell you something. Anyone that does not obey the Lord Jesus Christ will not go through the fire and you're going to be destroyed. He come here to save the world. He come here to put your sins under a cross. That's pious. Then you walk in it and you overcome. If you fall down, get back up again. You'll come to light. Amen? And if you don't follow him, you don't follow the word, you're going to be destroyed. Now, I've already showed you how people who love pride and greed take these carnal traditions right here and they want to pick and choose out of the Bible. They want to pull the things out that's going to make them look good so they can build selfish ambition, build a name, build a reputation, which fulfills pride, greed. And in their deceived heart, they think they're helping each other out. And you never hear about the perk of dying and overcoming the flesh. You'll never get into holiness and righteousness. You talk about it. You know what he's talking about. The cover being holy, remember? And this little thing right there hangs down, being holy. That's, are you hear what I'm saying? Hmm. I saw that here a while back, and I like... All right, now. The prophets of old spoke about these last days. I'm going to show, I don't have time for a lot, but I'm going to show you a little of it. Acts 3, verse. 
Let's look at verse 19. Repent, therefore, and return, turn to the Lord, that your sins may be wiped away, in order that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. I'm going to tell you, if you don't, if you don't repent of these, you're not going to have a refreshing from the Lord. Until you repent, he's not going to send Jesus to you. Verse 20, and he may send Jesus, the Christ appointed for you, whom heaven must receive until the what? Period of restoration, folks. I'm going to tell you something. They're going to be a hell and destruction like you've never seen before, but I'm going to tell you what. The Lord's raising up a glorious remnant of the people that's so wise, who have wise hearts, that's going to love the Lord with all their heart. And the glory and grace and presence and love and everything that God is going to be poured out on it like it's never been poured out on any human beings on this earth. But still in all, they're going to be a destruction like it's never, and a suffering, and not even the days, of, it's going to be like the days of Noah, but there's never been a hell like it's coming on this earth. And can I tell you something? You're further along than you'd ever dream. It would be sheer terror, as Isaiah 28 said, if you understood this. Now, by the way, this is good news. Don't you never think it's not good news because you're never going to hold, you'll never know overcoming and you'll never know where peace is until you understand what the judgment of God and the fear of God is. Forget it. You'll not know. Now, all right now, verse 22. And this is Moses speaking. And Moses said, he's quoting Moses, the Lord God shall raise up for you a prophet. Can I tell you who that prophet is? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's going to be like me. From your, and he's going to raise him up from your brethren. To him you shall give what? You're going to give heed in everything he says to you. And it shall be that every soul that does not heed that prophet, the Word of God and the Spirit of God is going to be what? I can't hear you. Is that in your Bible? How many know that you can sit in a church building and not give heed to Jesus? How many know that you can follow some smart folks and do this, 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 and build your own tower into heaven and miss God and be destroyed in it? That's the harlot whore of the last days who build her own tower into heaven while she's making a name for herself. The people of the world are building a name for themselves. They spend their whole lifetime to build an image and name for themselves. Then they come into church life and then they're still building an image and name for themselves. That's babbling the whore of the last days. Pride, reputation, image. self opinion Selfish ambition. They cast out demons and you'll never be free when you walk in this right here, folks. You'll never be free. You cast them out, get around the corner of their back. Cast them out, and you get around the corner of their back. Cast out 15, and you get around the corner. The only thing you have to hope for, wait till the next man comes to town. Maybe he's got the power to get me free or healed. How many hear me? Hold up your hand. Then the man that comes to town gets your heart instead of Jesus. Amen? So if you don't give heed to Jesus, you're going to be utterly destroyed from among the people. Is that what we've been talking about? And likewise, all... Now, now folks, we made a rule. Now, all of it knew. We made a rule. Anytime we see anything in the Bible, we don't act like it's not there. Amen? All right, now. Now, get your big pencil ready. And likewise, all the prophets who have spoken... From Samuel and his successor onward, onward have announced these days that we're living in right now. Glory be to God forevermore. It's all over your Bible. But you can't see it when you got tunnel vision. You can't see it when you're trying to look through the eyes of a carnal doctrine. You're blind as a bat. You can't see it. And I'll tell you what. It changes your whole Bible front and back. You don't skip, you don't have to skip scripture in the New Testament. You don't have to tap dance around nothing. Amen? 
Praise God. It all becomes good news. When you got this right here, you have to you have to tap dates, you have to act like scripture's not in there, that's in there, see. And then when you don't understand, you got somebody go find somebody new knows Greek or hermeneutics for you and get go. Go up here and find a man who's uh, got the word chain the pulpit so you can go find out what God's saying, you know. Dummy. See, you can't find, so the word can never change your heart. It's not going to change your life because you can't never discover nothing he already knows because he's been trained to be lords over God's heritage. King, big king, little king, little king, big king. And then the powers of darkness, while they fulfill his selfish ambition of pride and greed, they intimidate, and he'll, he, he preaches from guilt to pour guilt and intimidation and fear. And the powers of darkness follow all this up, and they fill the people with guilt, fear, intimidation to keep them in bondage, to keep them bondage, scared, and confusion and everything, and they never can see the light. Now, if you see that, hold up your hand. I just want to be sure because I can talk a little bit more. All right. That's enough of you. We'll go on. But the successor spoke of these last days. Now, I want to show you just... Well, let's... While we're there, let's just look over there in Acts 13. Now, this... Paul is quoting something out of Habakkuk. And I don't have time to go to Habakkuk, but you might jump over there. But I want to tell you what he's talking about right here. In Habakkuk... Verse 40... Paul is telling this congregation right here. He said, you better take heed, therefore, that the thing spoken of in the prophets, can I tell you what that thing is? That's them, the powers of darkness. The thing spoken of in the prophets, it's all over the prophets. May not come upon you. Doesn't sound like good news, does it? Behold you scoffers. I believe Brother Bob used teaching Sunday about Jude. In the last days, there'll be the mockers and scoffers who follow their only ungodly lust. They're worldly-minded. Their mind's on things of the world. They're devoid of the Spirit. They don't know God. They just pick up a Bible. They use God's people and God's Word to fulfill selfish ambition. Yep. Coming down hard and fast right now, folks. Behold, you scoffers, marvel and perish. It's coming upon you, scoffers, who follow you ungodly lusts, worldly-minded. For I'm accomplishing a work in your days, a work you will never believe, though someone should describe it to you. Let me ask you something, folks. How many people do you think of what we've already shared and looked at here, and we've got a whole bunch of the Word to look at, do you think you could go and describe this to? They'd run through the side of that wall or jump out one of those stained windows over there. That scoffers, they're worldly mind. They can't receive this that we're here right here. First place, they wouldn't even come here if they you was going to be here over 20 minutes. <laughs> Not right? They've been programmed. Pride and greed is programmed. Listen, pride and greed has programmed them to hate the Word of God. Yes. And pride and greed gets a lot of rep. But recognition and everything, he don't keep them too long. Dear God, don't torment flesh too long with the Word of God. <laughs> As a matter of fact, don't use too much of it. Use two scriptures and tell them some nice stories so you can get to be their idol. It's coming down. I hope you're not in it. It'll hell turn loose right now, folks. There's never been a shaking, confusion, hating, and everything that's ever been going on like they're going on in a church today. The shaking going on. And, and, and pastors, pastors won't help. Their families won't help. And they don't know what to do about it. If they get out of that ungodly doctrine right there and seek God and get their family out of that thing, they can get some help. But they're going to go through some fire first. You will go through the fire. Because you'll go through that valley and you'll find that's where God has to take you to find out he's got it all under control to begin with. Amen? All right, now, so that this... Now, while we're there, 
Paul's preaching a sermon. I just want to tell you how the powers of darkness use. So what's that first word up there? Yells it. If you're going to fulfill pride right there, you have to have nickels, noses, numbers, and approval of man. Is that right? I can't hear you. Amen. Amen. So what happens right there? You see, see, folks, don't pay too much attention to what I'm saying right now, you know. Uh, you know, and t but when you nickels, numbers, and, and, and people start getting, you start getting their nickels, noses, numbers, then, dear Lord, they think you do a favor to kill you. You see what I'm saying? Now, I want you to watch now. Paul and, Paul and Barnabas, they begin sharing with them this about these last days and how the powers of darkness will come on. And then they, they're up there in verse 42, and they're begging them, to, boy, don't you leave town. We want you to keep on doing this the next Sabbath and tell us about these things. Then verse 43, meeting broke up like it does here. And then verse 44, the next Sabbath, nearly the whole city assembled to hear the Word of God. Uh-oh, now that's what causes the problems when the crowds come. When the crowds come, that causes the problem. So, then when the Jews saw, that's a religious crowd, chief priests, chief preachers, kings, lords over God's heritage. Then when they saw the what? They saw the numbers. Then they were filled with what? I can't hear you. Who do you think is controlling their life? What were they jealous about? Because they fulfilled pride. I mean, after all, in their deceived heart, they had this thing right here to take these people into heaven right there. I mean, after all, this was their responsibility. And when you lose all your numbers, you can lose your kingship. Is that right? I can't hear you. So the kingship was coming down. The whole city comes out, you can lose your kingship. So the devil just, and the powers of darkness just put these thoughts right in them. They show them, people that love pride and greed, they put it in their minds, the kings, how to exploit and use God's heritage, numbers, and pick and choose through the Word of God to fulfill this selfish ambition the same way they teach the people out there in the world to do it. So they were filled with jealousy, and then they been, began contradicting the Word of God that Paul was speaking right there, and they were blaspheming. You know what jealousy does? Jealousy and pride attacks the truth. They don't like this part of the Bible right here. Find any places, churches, you can go into and preach this part of the Bible. This is what tears down flesh kingdoms. When you got a flesh king, you can never get to the king. Then, and Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, it was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you, but now since you repudiate and since you contradict the word of God and you judge yourself unworthy of what? You're unworthy of eternal life. Folks are doing it all over. I mean, people who've got their hearts tied to a form of godliness, they're, con they're giving you a whole lot of truth in the Bible, but they won't come down to holiness. They won't come down to righteousness. They won't come down to die in the flesh. They won't come down to, to being perfected in love. They won't come down to loving the Lord with all your heart and your neighbors yourself. Can I tell you something? That's the gospel. You can't be perfected in love. Pharisees had that same problem. So then... What do you think how the powers of darkness use flesh? The powers of darkness use the flesh who, they see, they program men to look up to men. See, look up to men, bow to men, and then, you know, listen to me. How many people do you think that would hear any new thing of the Word of God and they look to that important man before they move? They won't move until he moves. Amen? Because they've been programmed to be led by men instead of the Spirit of God. So then, that's where pride and greed leads you. So then, pride and greed, what do you have to do? They use important folks to come against the Word of God, and that's exactly what you're going to see here. Now look right here. And we see verse 49, the Word of the Lord was being spread through the whole region. Wasn't that good? But the religious crowd, verse 50, they aroused, they got some devout women of prominence. Let me read that one more time. Devout women of prominence. That's devout women of prominence that are full of hell and selfish ambition. Important, you know. That's not all. The religious crowd got the leading men. I know what something like that's about myself. They got their leading folks of the city and instigated the persecution against Paul and Barnabas. Let's, 
And since people are programmed to follow flesh and follow men, then the leading men and those devout women led a persecution against Paul and drove him plumb out of the district. The, Satan's methods, flesh methods, and religion's methods hadn't changed a bit. It's still going on the same way today. That's the way it is today. So, Paul, you know what? Paul and them went out and found them a place, and they just laid down and just about died there for about three weeks. Let's see right here. Verse 51, they shook off the dust, and the disciples, they were just, they, they shook off the dust, getting their feet right there. They got outside, they was outside of time. These disciples, they were continually filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they didn't come in there to please God. They come in, uh, please me, and they come in there to please God. Amen? Now, let me tell you something. If these things are in your life, you'll take the Bible and you'll change it. You'll add a little water to it. You'll back off. You'll skip and everything because you want to please me and more than you please God. But when you go in and you want to please God, God, and you get kicked out of running off, buddy, I'm telling you, God pours it on you. Now, that's where it is. The only reason you ever compromise the Word of God is because this stuff's in your life right there. People who love, who love, have this in their life, compromise the Word of God. Are you hear what I'm saying? You're going to know the mother what? One more time, you're going to know the mother what? All right, now. Well, we, I didn't intend to get in, but I'm glad we did there. Now, let's just back, let's, let, let's go back to, to uh, Jeremiah, which come after, it said Samuel and the prophets spoke of these days. Go back to Jeremiah 2. Hey, we can go all over the Bible, but let's go to Jeremiah 2. The whole Bible's a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it? All right. Look up here just a minute. Somebody brought me some scissors. If you find something you don't like, just come up here and get them and cut it out right there. <laughs> Jeremiah 2. Verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. May I ask you, who is the fountain of living waters? All right, I'm telling you, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. They hew for themselves sisters. They're going to water their own self. That's a religious system. They're broken sisters, cisterns, that can hold no water. It's old wineskins. You can't oil them and you can't stretch them. They won't hold it. They just don't work. Amen? Is that plain? Old wineskins don't hold it. Don't put some oil on it and try to stretch it. It won't work. You can't follow the devil and follow Jesus. Is that plain? Now, I'm not mad. <laughs> Verse 15. The, uh, this is them again. We, 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 they would call them them for a couple of more nights, all right? Them, the powers of darkness. Isn't that sweet? The young lions have roared at him. They've roared loudly and they've made his land a waste. Where is the, way, where's the land at, folks? Right here, buddy. I mean, turn the tent down. They made his land a waste. They've forsaken the Lord for religious systems. His cities have been destroyed without inhabitant or without spiritual habit, inhabitant. Verse 17, have you, have you not done this to yourself? You've lowered the hedge by your forsaking the Lord your God when he led you in. There's the way. But now, what are you doing on the road to the world? What are you headed back to the world for? Egypt. What are you drinking the words and the waters of the Nile? Or what are you doing on the road to Assyria to drink the waters of the Euphrates? Verse 19. Your own sin, your own wickedness, is going to correct you because that's the way the law works because by your deeds you're judged. Whatever you give out. Hey, listen, folks, look here. If you give out love, by your standard of measure, it's going to be measured to you. That doesn't just apply just to an offering. Whatever you give out to your neighbor, and that's what you give. You give out love and God will bless you and love you all over the place. 
That's the way the children of God act. But you give out judgment, condemnation, hate, anger, and all these things. God lowers a hedge and the powers of darkness bring that on you. That's what's all this about. By your standard of measure, isn't that a good law? Now see, what to understand the fear of God is just know what God's law is. You're blessed if you want to walk in love and be like God. You're cursed if you want to be like the devil. Ain't nothing wrong with a law like that, is there? I mean, God's just funny. He just wants to be God. Amen? Now, your apostasy is going to reprove you. Still in verse 19. Know therefore and see that it's evil and bitter for you to forsake the Lord your God. And what he says, the dread of me or the fear of me is not even in you, declares the Lord God of hosts. So you want to fear the powers of darkness and dread the powers of darkness. You want to dread men and fear men. God said, I'll be your dread and fear. I'm the one in charge of the whole shooting match. Amen? Now, well, while we're there, just look over in chapter 3, verse 3, because I want you to see, I'm skipping a whole lot of scripture. Therefore the showers, that's the spirit, have been withheld. There's not going to be no revival. There have been no spring rain, yet you had what kind of forehead? Did you have the mind of Christ? No, look here. You have the mind of the devil. That's a harlot forehead, and you're speaking blessings and curses. That's what James 3 calls you, you're going to bless God and then curse your neighbor, you adulteress. That's a harlot forehead. You had a harlot's forehead. And you refuse to be ashamed. When you're not ashamed, you sin. You know, listen, look here. When you have a license, look at me here. When you do this, 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 and you can walk like the devil, you don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to repent. Just walk ignorance, darkness, and get killed and destroyed. No fear of God. You don't have no fear of God because you fulfilled this. Of course, you missed God about 50 miles. Now, in chapter 4, let's begin looking in verse 4. Let's look in 3. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah, Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground. Now, breaking up your fallow ground is a hardened heart. Listen, a hardened heart. This is someone that practices this has a hardened heart. You break up your fallow ground when you start repenting of these things right here, these sins of the flesh. Amen? That's how you break up your fallow ground. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna get so it with the word. Break up your fallow ground and do not sow among the thorns. What's the parable of the word tell you? What's sowing among the thorns? The parable of the word, Mark 13, uh, Mark 4, Matthew 13, and Luke 8 tell you that sow, uh, sowing among thorn is when your heart is going after the worries of the world, deceitfulness, riches, and desires for other things. That's how you sow among the thorns. You're trying to sow the word among those kind of thorns when your heart's going after those things. Circumcise yourself to the Lord, verse 4. And remove the foreskins of your heart. Now I'm going to tell you that the people of the, uh, uh, this is the circumcision that we have today. We have the circumcision which we'll see later on in Colossians 2 right there where it's a removal of the sins of the flesh. That's how you circumcise your heart by removing the sins of the flesh. Which we'll see a little later. But this what, this, the foreskins of your heart. Men of Judah and, and inhabitants of Jerusalem lest my Wrath, there's a law. You break God's law, and it goes forth like a what? He removes a hedge. Who's the fire? The powers of darkness of the fire. He turns loose. And it's going to burn. I want you to circle for any other thing we make emphasis on here, circling your Bible when you come back through so you can follow it. And it's going to burn with none to quench it. I want you to take your Bible and stand up with me here just a minute. We well, want you to stretch there a little bit. If you see anything you like in here, just do a backflip. <laughs> burn it with none to quench it because of the evil. Now, you're going to burn because of the evil of your deeds. And now what the fire is going to burn you, the evil of your deeds, the works of the flesh. Amen? All right, now, we're going to declare in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem. Are we the heavenly Jerusalem? Blow the trumpet. You're going to blow the trumpet. How many think you hear a trumpet blowing right now? There is a trumpet blowing right now. And lift up a standard towards Zion. Now, look in verse 6. Lift up a standard towards Zion as a church. Seek refuge. Do not stand still. In other words, you better find a refuge of the Lord. 
For I'm bringing evil from the north. Can I tell you who that is? That's them. And it's a great destruction. You better believe it. The land, that's them, has gone up from his thicket. A destroyer of the nations has set out. He's gone out from his plate and he's going to make your land a waste. This is what the prophets are telling us about these days. Now, this just began. You watch how it tied it. I'm going to tell you, Jeremiah couldn't explain the church anymore if he'd, if he'd been standing right. It's just if he stood here and just made, made a pass through and just wrote it down. It couldn't be any more perfect. Verse 8, for this put on sackcloth, lament well. In other words, you better repent. For the fierce anger, there's the wrath of God, has not turned back from you. Now, look there in verse 14. Wash your heart. Folks, let me ask you something. How do you wash your heart? All right, look here. Here's your heart right here, the inner man. These things are coming out, so these things are on your, well, uh, are in your heart. Is that right? This is the fruit that breaks God's law, which brings the fire and the wrath. Amen? How do you wash this out of your heart? It will, it will can't wash it out of your heart until first you love the Lord with all your heart. You've got to love the Lord more in retaliation. You've got to love the Lord more in worry. You've got to love the Lord more in slander. You've got to love the Lord more in pride and greed. Now, first, you love the Lord more than you do any of these things. That's where you've got to start at. And then when you love the Lord more than any of these things, the Word of God begins more. So you'll come to the Word of God. See, it won't, see if, you, if you love pride and greed more than you do the Lord, you'll practice it and you won't give it up. When you come read your Bible, you go through your quiet time, you do your little religious exercise, it salves your conscience and make you think you're religious or something. But you're still getting destroyed. Is that plain? It just becomes a religious exercise. See, this don't teach you to wash your heart. You find your security here rather than here. Are you seeing the difference? Okay. That upsets folks. See, if you, look here. If you touch somebody's idol and they're full of the devil, what's going to come out? What well, came out when Jesus and Paul and disciples and everything come and said the word of God that you know, that, uh, that, see, this expose, this word exposes you when you use all of it. Amen? Does me. Amen. Okay. Now, wash your heart from evil, works of the flesh, O Jerusalem, that you may be what? You're going to be perfected in love and saved. How long will your wicked thoughts? There they are right there. Look here. Look at me, folks. Now, look at me. Is everybody looking? If your heart loves that cursed nature of Satan's seal, you're going to welcome it when the powers of darkness are going to bring fear. You're going to welcome when they bring pride to you. you. You receive these thoughts. You welcome them. You like them because you like that, that cursed nature. You're going to welcome criticism. You're going to welcome rebellion. You're going to welcome anger. You're going to welcome jealousy. You're going to welcome these darts and flaming missiles when they come in your mind because you love them more. You love the nature of Satan more than you do the nature of Jesus. How many see in that? Hold up your hand. You welcome these thoughts. A doctrine that does not conform you to God just programs you to resist the Word of God. You find your security here instead of there. That's the same thing that happened to the Pharisees. They couldn't be led out of spiritual darkness. They'd be offended at what Jesus said. They're still offended. They'd be offended at this. We're talking about holiness and righteousness. How many knows that everything I've said the last two nights is love? Every last word I've said is pointed to love. This is not a demon meeting or pigs in the parlor. Okay. So you're going to wash your heart from evil, O Jerusalem, that you may be saved. How long are these wicked thoughts going to lodge within you? How long are you going to enjoy receiving this junk from Satan? Wash your heart. Love the Lord with all your heart. And then you wash and remove that and, and be conformed to the image of Jesus. Have your mind renewed. Glory be to God. Who's close to a fit besides me? Hallelujah. Boy, you, how many are seeing grace? You see what Jesus is trying to do with us right now? Are you seeing all of our talk and conversation? Do you understand when you remove all this stuff out of your mind and everything, what kind of conversation and meetings we have then? Amen. Amen. Yes. Whew. All right. He said in verse 6, you can report it to the nations now. Proclaim it over Jews and besiegers are coming from what kind of country? It's a far country. You better believe it. It's going to lift their voice. By the way, this is not Russia. 
Amen? Uh, look there in verse... Uh, let's go to verse... Let's look there in verse 20. Disaster on disaster is proclaimed, for the whole land is devastated. Suddenly my tent, that's your body. Suddenly my tent is devastated, my curtains and incense. How long must I keep seeing the Word of God? How long must you keep seeing the Word of God? How long must you keep hearing the sound of the trumpet? The trumpet's warning you right now. For my people are foolish virgins. They're foolish hearts. They're foolish hearts. They're foolish hearts. You're not wise virgin because you won't come to the Word of God. You've got a foolish heart. I'm going to show you the difference over in the New Testament, foolish and wise. They know me not. They don't even know the Lord. When you're not led to the Spirit of God, can I tell you something, honey? You don't know Him. And I'm going to tell you something else, too. You can come and love the Lord with all your heart, and you can be on fire for the Lord and everything. You sit under this here for a little while and see if you don't start drifting over here and see. And you'll finally, one of these days, you'll say, well, whatever happened to my first love, and you keep sitting there in death waiting for things to change, and you're getting hardened and hardened and hardened and hardened and hardened to resist the world of God while your eyes is on some smart man. Somebody that you like. <laughs> you got like nice folks. So you, know, you understand you love nice folks more than you do God? Powers of darkness help you do that. And people are foolish. They know me not. They're stupid, Geraldine. They have no understanding. They're shrewd to do evil, but to do good, to do good they don't even know. Chapter 5. I want to skip on over to 5. Chapter 5, verse 3. The Lord has turned loose the refiner's fire on them. He's turned loose the powers of darkness, no hedge. And this is what happened to people today at stiff neck and stubborn being destroyed. O Lord, do not thine eyes look for truth. Thou hast smitten them, but they don't even weaken. Thou hast consumed them, and that's, <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what's been going on. Boy, deliverance ministry just springing up and spreading out all over there. They've got a full-time job. Usually with the same people. Get them free and let them come back next week with the same strongholds. And still, can't figure out why is it happening? Why can't it be free? You can't be free because your heart's tied to a doctrine that doesn't conform you to godliness. You're not overcoming. If someone's your Lord, they control your life. Jesus can't control your Lord while men, doctrines, theology, intellect, academics have got your heart. That's the falling away. While men who love selfish ambition, not... <laughs> Mr. Nice Folks, he's a nice fella that leads you to hell. Let me say it over here. They're nice fellas that lead you to hell. Real nice. They know a lot of historical. They, know, they tell you things you've never known this word of God before. Uh, uh, you know, I wonder how many is here. And, uh, you know, when I, you know I, but, but it's not up to me. I'm just going to say it, and I'll let you use the Word of God show it to you, and it's up to you. you. You sit back down, please. Let's read it, verse 3. O Lord, did not thine eyes look for truth? Thou smitten them, they just full of demons. They, they didn't weaken, thou hast consumed them, and they still refuse to take correction or proof. They won't change nothing. They, they learn new things. Ever learning, they're never able to come to knowledge of the truth. Never leave old carnality. Never leave that carnal doctrine that doesn't conform you to godliness. They've made their faces harder than a rock. They've refused to repent. Then I said, well, they're, they're just the poor. They're, they're just the foolish. You know what I'm... Uh, they don't know the way of the Lord or the ordinance of their God. Here's what the Lord said. I'm going to go with the great. I'm going to go with the leaders. And I'm going to speak to them for... For they know the way of the Lord, the ordinance of their God, but they too with one accord have... They've broken the yoke. In other words, they've turned back. They burst the bonds. So what the Lord moves the hedge, and here they come again. They're throwing the lines from the forest is going to what? I can't hear you. The powers of darkness are going to destroy them. The hedge is removed and it's happening today. That's what's in much hell, confusion, anger. Go to a convention and get killed. (laughs) 
or a business meeting. So a lion from the forest is going to slay them. A wolf of the desert is going to destroy them. A leopard is watching their city. Everyone that goes out of them is going to be torn to pieces by the powers of darkness. I hope you're hearing this. Because their transgression are many, the posses have fallen away. Are numerous. Verse 9. Shall I not punish these people, declares the Lord, on a nation such as this? Shall I not avenge myself? That's revenge. That's a judgment of law. Verse 10. Go, lower the hedge. Here they come, lions. Here comes the powers of darkness. Go up through a vine rose and destroy. But see, it doesn't, it doesn't just happen, you know, here. It's just slow. Look at me, folks. This destruction comes just like a moth eating away a garment. This is the way these strongholds and roots work. And it's slow, and they keep building and building. You stay in rebellion to God. You stay in rebellion to God. You stay in rebellion to God. And it chains. Here comes another chain. They bring more pressure on you, and there comes more chains. There's more chains. There's more stronghold. And then the fortresses come, and you can never get free of fortresses and strongholds as long as your heart is tied to a doctrine that does not conform you to God. It's because that's how come you to be there in the first place. You can never be free. You can have a lot of deliverance ministries, but you can't be free. You're always dealing with sickness, and you're always dealing with the powers of darkness, but you're never dealing with how they got there. You wear yourself out. Go up through a vine rose, verse 10, and destroy but do not execute a complete destruction. Strip away our branches, but they're not the Lord's. The Lord always keeps a remnant, doesn't he? Look in verse 12. They've lied about the Lord and said, not he. Misfortune's not going to come on us. There's no curse can come on us. Christians can't have demons. Sickness is not sin. And we'll not see the sword or curse. We'll not have a famine of the word. We know everything about the word. Verse 15. Behold, I'm bringing a nation against you from afar. That's them. Oh, house of Israel, that's a church. How many know that we're supposed to be the Israel of God today? This is what the prophets are warning us and tell us about today. It's an enduring nation. It's an ancient nation, a nation whose language you do not know. You don't know it, and you can't understand what they say. Their quivers like open grave. All of them are mighty men, and they're going to devour. They come to steal, kill, and destroy. They're going to devour your harvest and your food. This is a curse. They're going to devour your sons and your daughters. This is the powers of darkness and a curse. They're going to devour your flocks and your herd, everything you put your hands to. They're going to devour your vines and your fig trees, and they're going to demolish with a curse, the sword, your fortified cities of these. You, folks, do you know that people come into places like this? Well, made a wooden stone all over this country. And they come in there, and they find security inside that building. They act like that. This is going to be the vehicle that takes them right into heaven. They just feel so religious and safe when they get inside that building. It's a fortified city in their hearts. See, it's a fortified city. It's the tower that's going to take them up into heaven. It's going to be devoured and destroyed. Folks, this is what's going on right now. This is a trumpet. And those that wise in the heart going to hear Everybody that's got this in their life right here is going to be offended. And they're going to stick around. They're going, to get, they, they're going to be filled with hate, murder, unforgiveness, resentment. So what's new under the sun? Everybody that loves the nature of Satan always hates the gospel, which says you walk in love. The gospel messes with your idols. And that stirs up hate and criticism. Hey, folks, I don't want to make this work. What I'm saying right here is God. I don't know what it makes the gospel work. It's God. But I'm going to tell you something that will change your life. 
This word will change your life because you're making decisions in your heart. Everything, every, this word of God, you sit on, you sit, sit on the whole council of God's word right there, and it'll tear down every idol, it'll tear down every stronghold, it'll tear down every sin. And you, I, how many know that you've been sitting there? Every hour that you've been sitting here last night, you've been getting more peace. How many aware? You know why? Because you're. Let me tell you why it is. Let me show you how the word of God. Because you're making conscious decisions in your heart. When you see something or hear something you know from God, you, the Spirit of God is showing you, hey, you've got this in your life. And then you say, you say, man, I love Jesus more than I do that. Bang, these strongholds are coming off of you. Because like you're choosing Jesus. Are you hear what I'm saying? That's why you're getting free. Praise God. How many believe the presence of God is in you right now? It has to be the presence of God to communicate it and do the work. It's all Jesus. It never was us. We get in on it, right? Now, look in verse 21. Hear this, old foolish. Is a foolish virgin. Did I tell you about these foolish virgins who won't come to the light and senseless people? You have eyes, but you see not. You have ears, but you hear not. Do you not fear me, declares the Lord? Do you not tremble in my presence? Look at verse 23. But this people has a stubborn, they have a rebellious heart, they've turned aside and departed. Now, how do you turn aside? Look at me, folks. The only way you'll ever possess this land is continue and endure to the end and overcome. Now, as long as you love the Lord with all your heart, you will possess a land. Let me say that again. You will possess a land because the Lord has said you possess a land. But the moment the powers of darkness can get your heart to turn over the, to the world, the things of the world, or anything else, you'll turn aside and you'll go over here and you'll leave your first love. Are you warned over in Revelation, you better repeat, turn to your first love and repeat the deeds that you first started when you come to him and just, yeah. are you hearing me? Well, I better not get too far in that before we get to it. Okay. This people has a stubborn, rebellious heart. They've turned aside and departed. They do not say in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God who brings revival. People are going to talk about revival. They go back to the 18th century. They go back... 20 years and 40 years ago and 50 years ago and how they did it. How about the book of Acts? Amen. When you get like the congregation was in the book of Acts where you one heart and one mind and Jesus is standing in the middle of it, you'll see revival. Yes. Amen? And you're not going to be like them because they loved their neighbors or self because they were not tied to no possessions. They, they wouldn't go up. Anybody had need. They have to have no one among them was any kind of need because any of them had property or anything like that, they'd sell it because they loved their neighbors or self. That was a book and that's a church and that's a pattern. Don't let something spring up here and call it it. If they don't love the Lord with all their heart and their neighbors or self, that's not it. Amen. Amen. Glory. All right, now. Verse 25, your iniquities, your sins have been turned away this rain and its season, the autumn rain, the spring rain. And your sins have withheld good from you. Verse 29, shall I not punish these people, declares the Lord? On a nation such as this shall I not, I not avenge myself. I'm not going to lower the hedge on them. And now an appalling and a horrible thing has happened. Now this is what God calls an appalling and a horrible thing has happened. Let's see what has happened in the land. Her prophets are preaching falsely. They won't preach the whole counsel of God's word. They won't preach righteousness and holiness. They won't preach being conformed to the image of Jesus and a divine nature. They preach and the preach, preach the priest, preachers, they're ruling on their own authority, not God's authority. They're kings and lords over God's heritage. And my people just love it so. They love to have a flesh king. You know what a flesh king will do? He'll never tell you that you ever have to walk in love. He'll talk about love, but he'll never tell you. He'll talk about that old form of godliness, that old world love, not this kind of love where you have to love your neighbors yourself and have to die of the flesh. So the time will come and they'll not endure sound doctrine. 
They're going to want to have their ears tickled and accumulate themselves teachers and doctrines that don't conform to God and says so they can satisfy their pleasures of the flesh. And then they're going to turn their ears from the truth. You no longer need this anymore because you go to a doctrine that does not conform you to godliness and then you don't ever need this anymore. That's the only way you'll ever be conformed to the image of Jesus, folks. You better not ever get bored by hearing the word of God. Amen. Did I tell you the powers of darkness were tree cutters? I'm going to get to cover that some in the New Testament quite a bit. I'll tell you how far I've gotten tonight. I've gotten about 3% as far as I intended to be tonight. All right, verse 5, arise, let us attack by night. We're attacking in, there in spiritual darkness. Night represents spiritual darkness. Let's destroy our palaces. Do you know who the king of the palace is? The king of Babylon is, is Satan. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the hedge is down. Go in there and what? Go in there, tree cutters, lions, go in and cut down their trees. Amen? Cut down her trees and cast up a siege against the church Jerusalem. This is a city to be punished in whose midst there's only oppression. There's no peace there. See, folks, I told you that the prophets ex clearly explain. I just wrote a book, The Great Falling Away, today. We got right to the point. And uh, in this thing, we, I've got a whole chapter on the prophets of old spoke of these last days. Scripture, you know. I just used just a couple of places there. And then go Scripture and Scripture. There's close to 2,000 scriptures in this book to show the great falling away today. See, I can only use just a part of it here. And somebody gets, a, you know, just one tape or something like this. And they, you see, they, you can take what, something out of, out of uh, what am I trying to tell you? Take it out of context, you know, and then, you know, you can make somebody, you know. And that's the uh, Lord just opened the door to, to write this book. And... Uh, as a matter of fact, I wasn't seeking to write a book. Since I, met, I wish I hadn't even mentioned that, but now I'm going to tell you about it. I wish I hadn't even brought it up, but I got a letter over a year ago, about a year and a half ago, from a publisher to write a book. And that's, you know, I kind of thought about something like that, about, about a book. You know, I told somebody about going and looking some property and you go get a Japanese oven or something. I laughed about it when I got that, me, me writing a book, see. And so I'd heard a friend, you know, say one time the book's already been written, so I just kind of liked that, and I just wrote him a letter and told him the book had already been written and forgot about it. And later on, when a fellow, you know, that's writing the Bible says, I, I knew some things, you know, I'd get some help, but, but they could just write things. I didn't have a lot to pull from in the composition and everything going through the ninth grade, and so they'd write these Bible studies, and so but they left, and I had to write them. Well, I started writing, and I found out I had more to write than a Bible study. So I called this fellow and I thought I'd just get uh, a better deal. It cost over $10,000 just sending Bible studies out on the mailing list. People need to see by incidentally, that's the reason we got you registered, not to, we won't be writing you for money. It's the kind of send you material and things of this nature. And uh, so I thought, well, it might be, I don't, see, I didn't even understand it. But I thought, and so I had this fellow at work with me to send him, uh, and to call him and ask him. He said, well, you send it over here. So uh, he, he sent a few things that I'd just written, and I just kind of laughed about it, just handed it to him. He said, he said you, may, you have over 100 pages here, and we'll put it in 10,000 bookstores and all over the world. And I said, well, dog is, boy, I tell you what, they never did do nothing like this back in Benton, I'm telling you. <laughs> so I started on that thing, and the biggest war, I all but died the last seven months. Brother Paul, when, when, I, when I was sharing with y'all out there at uh, Full Gospel, we had, they had a, a retreat out here in February. I mean, I was walking death about then. I'm not kidding you. I really was. But I all, just all got killed in that, just, you know, just the warfare and everything going through that thing, dealing with things like what we're sharing here tonight. But see, no one can't, if they say, well, he teaches legalism. I said, sir, what page is that? He keeps people on the law and he doesn't understand grace. Sir, would you, would you point to me what page that is, please? See this rumor, just talk, Pharisees. You understand what I mean? Okay. They, they have to discredit the word. You have to jump in or jump out. Well, he said, go cut down their trees. Verse 7. As a well keeps its waters fresh, so she keeps fresh her wickedness. 
Violence and destruction are in her. Sickness and wounds are ever before me. Does that sound like God gets real excited when you have some diseases? Huh? Verse 10, to whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? That's what God's wanting to do, speak and give warning. Behold, their ears are closed. They cannot listen. Behold, the word of the Lord has become a reproach to them. Look at me. They have no delight in it. They're offended. Offended. We just like tunnel vision. We just like the part that fits in our little sweet structure. Offended. Have no delight in it. Bored. Ten minutes we'll listen to it. Have no delight in the Word of God. Verse 11, he said, I'm full of the wrath of the Lord. I'm weary holding it. Pour it out on the children in the street and on the gathering of the young men together. For both the husband and the wife is going to be taken. The age and the very old and their houses. Look here, here's your houses right here. Here's your houses right here. Their houses is going to be turned over to others. Their fields, we're supposed to be God's field and their wives together. It doesn't mean you're going to lose your garden. For I'm going to stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land. For from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, that's the way it is today. Everyone is greedy for gain. Their heart goes, look here, making the things of God to fulfill selfish ambition. And from the prophet even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. They speak peace to their neighbor while they set an ambush for him, self-centeredness. They've healed the brokenness of my people superficially. And they're saying, peace, peace. That's a peace and safety. Tell they've got peace and safety while they walk in the stubbornness of heart, but there is no peace. Were they ashamed because the abomination they've done, all these sins and all this hell right here, are they ashamed or are they not even ashamed at all? They don't even know how to blush. Listen, folks, look here. When you're tied to something that does not conform you to godliness, you'll never come to the mirror here to find out what you're doing. Amen. So you can't be ashamed. You can't be ashamed that you walk in the nature and character of Satan. You can't be ashamed because you've got tunnel vision. You don't look at the part of the Bible. You're like a natural man that come and look at the mirror and he turns away and forgets what kind of man he is. The word has no effect on your religious. <sighs> Therefore they shall fall. They're going to fall. That's destroyed among those who fall. At the time of their punishment, I'm going to cast them not up but down, says the Lord. For thus, says the Lord, stand by the way and ask for the ancient path. Ask for the good way, as that's the word of God, and walk in it. Don't analyze it. And then you're going to find rest, and then you're going to find peace for your souls. Listen, folks, you have to walk in it, not analyze it. You understand what I mean? People who are led by pride and greed, they lead you to analyze the word of God, not walk in it. And then that's the way you're going to find rest and peace. Well, God's going to put a hedge around you. And that's, hey, folks, you've got a land to go possess. And I'm going to tell you it's peace and rest. And you cease from your own works of the flesh when you get rid of this. People are trying to walk in these things, right? No man here with pride, the more he does for God, the more pride he gets. Helps God out. You're going to find rest for your soul. But they say, we will not walk in it. And then I set a watchman over saying, you better listen to the sound of the trumpet. And they said, we will not listen. You know why they say we'll not listen to the sound of the trumpet? Look at me, folks. They got this. It's got their heart. Their heart is committed to this. Can't hear, can't see, senseless. Stupid children. They won't wash their heart. Don't even know the Lord. Don't call anybody that walks into a building a Christian. Amen. And I set a watchman over them saying, listen to the sound of the trumpet. And they say, we'll not listen. Hear, O nation, verse 18, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I'm bringing disaster on this people the fruit of their plans because they've not listened to my words. Now watch this. As for my law, they've what? Rejected also. May I ask you, has the law been rejected today? Huh? Is it? Is the law rejected? The law is being rejected if we're not fulfilling the law. Isn't that right? Verse 22.
Thus says the Lord, Behold, a people is coming from a north land. It's a great nation. Can I tell you who this people is? Can I tell you again, it's not Russia. Can I tell you who it is? It's them. They're not being restrained anymore. They've been being turned loose. And a great nation, being a, and here's where they're going to come from, the remote parts of the earth. That's where they come from, the powers of darkness. They seize bow and spear. They are cruel. They have no mercy. Their voice roars like a sea. Have, listen, I want to ask you, how many know about in the last days in Luke 21, it's talking about the roaring of the seas? Folks, I'm going to tell you something. You know, many times when I get in meetings and I, I just barely get through a foundation there and I just, because you can't keep people three weeks in a word or something like that. You know, like in the days of Paul, we hadn't got there yet. And I'm just getting started. Last, like last night, I just getting started when we went home. Do you understand what I mean? We, were, we would have come to a place right there. We could have stayed up all night right there and you could outrun anybody in town if you stayed there receiving that word. You wouldn't even been sleepy. I'm going to tell you, folks, if we quit receiving these lies and junk in our mind, if we receive a lie up here, we get it. There's some tapes back there. It talks about Bowman and Church of the Last Days and these things. There's a lot of these things. I want to, and and, and if, if, if there's anything that you like that we're carrying on right here, I wish you'd really, just really consider them right there. And if anybody has any problem with you, financing something and so forth, we want to talk to you about it. What we try to sell those tapers average around three dollars a piece. We're not in a commercial business and Brother Bob knows I'm not and that's the reason I'm here. We're in a building to build up it's pretty expensive things to take, but we're not into building buildings and things. We build up the body of Christ. You don't you don't make a reputation of this kind of message anyway. <laughs> Some people can afford to pay more than others to kind of help us to help the ones that can't pay in these cases. So if you have a problem with it, you ask, but well, we want to spread the word. And there's a lot to it we won't even be able to get into. It. I, 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 it's just like in a pastor's heart. I want, you to get, I want you to get the word. I want the word to spread. I like you to put the tape in somebody else's hand. This is not a commercial. I mean, I'm just dead serious about it. To spread the word. All right, now let's continue. Verse 24. This is what's going on today. The prophets of old spoke of these last days. We've heard the report of it. Our hands are limp. Anguish has seized us. Pain as of a woman in childbirth. You know what that's called, folks? I wish you all had a problem getting it. Look at it. This is birth pain. These are birth pains of a church that's given birth and dying in the flesh. You understand what I mean? But this is a birth pain of judgment. This is one that Zeph and I talk about, the consecrated guests that the Lord invites to to, to suffer. It's over in Matthew 19. It's a supper that the Lord hands over the devil. He hands over all people that's not going to come to him and he removes the hedge and here they come. Isaiah 13 talks about that you're going to look at one another in astonishment. This is a foolish virgin. When all this hell comes, they're going to look at one another in astonishment. They're surprised and it's too late. They can't get in the ark. Not on earth has there ever been a time like it. I can't get, we haven't got time to get all in that tonight. But a pain is a woman in childbirth. How many know that demons have a demon of pain? How many know that? Hold up your hand, there's a demon of pain. Okay. Do not go out in the field, do not walk in the road, for the enemy is a sword, a terror. O daughter of my people, on, uh, put on sackcloth and roll in ashes. Mourn is for an only son, and lamentation most bitter, for suddenly what? The story's going to come upon us. Now, I want to remind you of something, folks. You can't know about peace and you can't know about overcoming if you don't know about these things. Do you understand what? If you don't know about the judgment of God, how are you going to know what walking in righteousness is? Tell me. How many know there's just going to be a remnant? How many know the word that well, the way is wide that leads to destruction and few of those are going to find it? How many know it's a narrow way? You have to love the Lord with all your heart. Pride and greed widen that door out to devil's tires and everything else gets in it. Suddenly the destroyer is going to come upon us. I've made you an assayer. He's talking about the powers of darkness. He said, I've made you an assayer and a what? It's a tester among my people. If they don't know that love the Lord with all their heart, they'll never get rid of these things, the nature of Satan. 